anyone to appear on the stage. Well, maybe we should explain to people, Glenn, too, that we're, we're right now we're sitting backstage. And, uh, Can you guys stand up? That's okay, that's okay, that's okay. All right. We're sitting and backstage and we're trying to see who's here and grab them so they could give their respective New Year's greetings to the people watching it on TV and listening on the radio. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I, th I think you guys will need no introduction to the TV audience. Certainly not. I should hope not. Absolutely. We've got here Bob Weir right next to me. He's uh, up there playing rhythm guitar. You guys sound great tonight. Thank you. It's real hot. Mickey Hart. Happy New Year. We were just Happy talking about uh, past Grateful Dead New Year's Eve concerts for us. And this is, uh, our statistics say this is number 12 for you in Winterland. And, uh, it looks like we've played here 50, 54 times. Or 54 times? Something like that. Amazing. We have all kinds of numbers about that. Nobody can quite remember. You know, my memory is hazy about some of the New Year's Eves. Even Our memories are understandably that. hazy, too. Yeah. How does it make you feel to think you might never play at Winterland again? Well, you know, I'm beginning to get fond of this place. I used to hate it because it, it's sort of an acoustical snake pit. But we've sort of learned to work with the place over the years, and it's going to be kind of, it's going to be kind of sad to see it go. But nonetheless, there's got to be a better place somewhere around. Get Uncle Bobo to build us a place, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, you got the talent. All you need is a barn, and you can Maybe put. Maybe can build us a place and give. Yeah. Us if you, if you, if, if, if all, all the people out there listening and, and watching, would send Bill some encouraging mail, encouraging get on, to, to, to to get it on and, and build a place, <laughs> that really a good place for rock and roll. Rock and roll. I mean, just keep those letters coming all the time. All the time. Don't let up. Don't let up. Don't give him a a, a moment. Bobo, what, know what you really want. You know, no mercy. <laughs> Maybe he'll give in. I guess this is where they should superimpose the address where they can send their cards and letters now, but I don't know if we have that ready. Yeah. Well, you can see that you can see that in the phone book, uh, uh, Fillmore Management or whatever. Uh, uh, FM, Productions. FM Productions. FM Productions. Send your cards and letters to <laughs> Bill Graham, care of FM Productions, telling him to please build a good place for rock and roll. Bob, you were born and raised in San Francisco. Did you ever come here when you were a kid for some for events and stuff? Sure. Well, not here. Well, I, I don't think I ever came saw the the, the I show here. I never did. The rest of my family did, but I wasn't much interested. You went into ice skating or uh, no. political conventions or whatever? No. <laughs> this is also the place where um, some famous boxing event happened, a really famous boxing event a long time ago, 1929 or something. The one thing about this place is it really is kind of a hazard. One time we were playing a, a sound check, getting, getting everything tweaked up. And we hit a, a big thunderous chord, and a great huge section of plaster fell out of the, the ceiling and landed on the floor. David Crosby was sitting out there listening, and it landed, oh, maybe six feet behind him, and it was about six by six feet, big enough to really ice somebody. Well, I was hearing a story earlier tonight about uh, that happening during one of your shows last year, that uh, Phil hit the perfect bass note and uh, brought down a shower of plaster from the ceiling. Well, maybe you guys could end up by just tearing the place down yourselves tonight. It wouldn't be that hard to do. <laughs> well, it's a long night. We understand you're going to play a couple more sets and go for a long time tonight. Yeah. So it was mostly, it was a lot of old favorites in the first set and a few, a few new ones mixed in. I guess. Uh -huh. we, we don't know what we're going to do. Maybe you could talk to us a little bit about, because you haven't certainly been on television in the Bay Area since you've been back from Egypt. Really, maybe you could tell our, our viewers a little bit about that, about the experience, you know, if, if you can. I mean, I know you're deluged with New Year's Eve sentiments right now and everything, but... I really don't know what to think. I haven't organized my thoughts about it, it Egypt. It would take longer to talk about Egypt than we have now, because we have to go back and play. But sometime I'd like to come and talk to you about it, if you're interested. It would be great. It's amazing. amazing. Right now, it's, we have to go back and play in about 10 minutes. You had um, Listen, Hamza Al-Din and a whole bunch of people who he's joined you in this, Egypt, he's, yeah. He's here this evening, and uh, maybe we can get him to play with us, you know. He's a fine uh, musician. He's one of the friends we've met going to Egypt and um, he's come back and he plays with us once in a while and it's a great influence on our music. Yeah, we, we heard him recently when uh, K-San was part of uh, your broadcast from New Jersey and uh, great great moment in the broadcast when the percussionists and the hand clappers uh, all started doing it. It was much better last night. Yeah, we did it last <laughs> night again. Maybe we'll do it again tonight. Practice makes perfect. Last night, where were you? In uh, Polar LA. Pavilion. UCLA. Yeah, that's right. We had people clapping in 12 beats uh, uh, that last time we were here at Winterland, that last night with Humza. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. That was really exciting. The whole audience clapping in 12 beats. That was great. Well, they didn't know. <laughs> well, they didn't know it was 12, but that's what it was. 
Well, I guess you have to go. I guess you have to get going back there. I think yeah. so. That's what we're we told. There are people so I think we should be signaling that, frantically that to us. To say goodbye? Yeah. Let's go, Bob. We've said enough, <laughs> right, Bob. Well, well hey, tactful thanks. guests. Thank you very much, and Happy New Year. That was Bob Weir and Phil Lesh from The Grateful Dead. Joining us here backstage at Winterland. Did you say Phil Lesh? No, I did say Phil Lesh. Bob Weir and Mickey Hart. That's what I thought you said, yeah. Really? Thank hey, you, Norm. It's a good thing I'm here, Glenn. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm not here, Norm, because I could certainly be <laughs> embarrassing if I was. I'll tell you, there are people walking around here. I think some of them have been tested. They are in altered states of consciousness. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Well, some of the people have just had minor alterations around some parts of their clothing, but um, a lot of them, it seems like the whole consciousness has been taken in a whole lot. Good vibes. You know, the, hall like is, uh, the hall is decorated with memories of the past, and we just had a couple of shots, a close shot of a Steve Miller picture, and uh, some of the other posters that are around Winterland from this shows one. in the past. Here's some of our memorabilia Party right here in front of you. Tiaras, all these things were handed out to people at the door of Winterland as they came in tonight. Many of them even are uh, unembarrassed enough to wear them, but not us. <laughs> This is the good old-fashioned noisemaker. You know, I think over the years, this has really been my favorite. There have been birthday parties, there have been uh, New Year celebrations, but, but these, are these I think, are my favorite noisemakers, the ones that roll out kind of. You know, Glenn? Here's a way. Pardon me? How do you do? I do all right. I'm Glenn Lamb. Hi. We're coming to you live from Winterland. Sure. <laughs> Say that way. And we're waiting for some okay, more music to take place. Do thing here quick with, uh, I got to explain this thing to Mickey about the Thunder Machine, which you're going to be playing okay, there. Okay, that's what the we want the machine. Talk to you about. Okay, it's a, it's pieces of the old original Thunder Machine plus some new things added. The Boise Thunder Machine. Okay. And the uh, basic idea, which is stringing car fenders together and hooking strings across it and tightening them, but the whole thing moves, so it goes twang twang twang. The main mistake is people beat on it too much. Right. We, as as Mountain Girl says, we've got to keep the melons off of it. <laughs> okay, it has a base in the back. It has a thing that hooks up on the top that you pull like this and that bases. It has a thing inside of it, so there are four pickups coming out of it, hooked into the, the sound system. And you guys just the nod. Yeah, we're into the sound system. So uh, you guys are, when you go into the Rhythm Devils thing, uh -huh, we'll, we will move it out into the, its position. I have to get inside of it. Okay. Uh, we'll play it. Uh, <laughs> when, when we've played long enough, pick us off and haul us off. Chuck has his cannon here, too. Oh, marvelous. What could we, what could we do? <laughs> if this is what we're worried about, if you want to talk to somebody about the cannon. No, it's okay. It's okay. okay. The cannon's okay. It's, it's, anything is okay. okay. As long as it won't blow us off the stage. I hope not. It never has yet. Never blowed nobody, yeah, hurt no, nobody yet. That's better than I did. Uh, it's, um, it's loud, is all. It's loud. Cool. Uh -huh. okay. But it might hit that ball that hangs in the middle. That's what we're <laughs> going to shoot at. It'll okay. give us a, a thing to work for. Great, you got it. Okay. Well, happy New Year, Ken. Okay, Happy New Year, Mickey. Good to see you. <laughs> well, I think that explains it pretty well. Mm -hmm. That was uh, Ken Kesey explaining that to Mickey we're Hart. Here, sir. <laughs> oh, we're on, we're on TV, so we're almost everywhere. Actually, that's not us at the moment. But uh, we're broadcasting uh, on, on KSAM. There you are, looking somewhat like yourself. Okay. And we're on, um, we're on Channel 9 in San Francisco. Oh, good. Broadcasting all night here. Well, that's good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Now what? Well, I don't know. What, um, tell us something about the Grateful Dead from way back when. The Dead are... Um, uh, they're the only really working alchemists. Uh, they understand why people come to these things, and it's rock and roll is a side product of it. They know that something builds and builds, and that if it isn't brought off, it uh, erupts someplace else. And the dead have built a reputation of being able to stroke a thing just the way that the wind strokes the clouds until finally it attracts the lightning out of the ground. Well put, Keezy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're good, you know. They're classy. This thing in Egypt was, was super classy. Were you in Egypt? Yeah. Uh, damn Rolling Stone. Uh, they gave it about that much, but uh, it was incredibly good. There was a thing on KSFO about what had class. They were talking about Superman, as whether Superman had class this last year. Uh, they s were giving it, this is a class status or uh, tacky, they were giving it class until uh, they found out that it had $25 million spent for advertisement, and that's tacky. 
so it didn't get class. And uh, as I was watching this, there was somebody uh, called and said, the dead in Egypt had class, super class. They, were, they played to like seven, 800 people and, and millions of uh, other people and, and were doing the same thing that was trying to be done, only they were doing it actually with music. Moving, trying to move our scale in with their scale. They were trying to mesh the two musical and, and philosophical and religious uh, how did, forms. How did the people respond? Had, did they heard of they the dead? They understood it. Yeah. Egyptians, under, we've been having an affair with Egypt. You know, we're, uh, we're like the key and they're like the, the lock and they can't work without us. And they, they dug us being over there. They dug the dead a lot. They chanted, me key, me key, because they thought he was Saudi. <laughs> in fact, he's looking more and more like it. Um, and, you know, it, it cost them a half a million bucks. And they probably sold 1,300 tickets. Uh, and then they work that off by, pay, by working concerts, you know. And they just come back from four nights of hard, bust-ass rock and roll labor. Um, you know, they've got a, a tremendous backlog of integrity that uh, nobody denies them. They could, they could rest, and yet they don't. They continue to work as hard as they can all the time. And it was like, it made me think of the Satchmo thing. Remember when Louis Armstrong went to Russia? Yeah. That, that whole feeling, that was why it was, it was happening. Okay. <laughs> Is that enough? Yeah, it was good. Okay. Happy New Year to you. Yeah. <laughs> Ken Kesey. Well, who knows what's going to happen next?